welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church, where we are loving, serving, and transforming lives. I am Reverend Iantha Mills. I'm the senior pastor here at Asbury, and we are so glad you joined us on this Palm Sunday. We want you to be aware of all of our worship celebrations during this Holy Week. At 5 p.m., join us on Facebook Live for our Bridge Contemporary Worship Service. On April 1st at 7 p.m., we'll have our Monday Thursday service with Reverend Clyde Nelson preaching. On Friday, April 2nd at 12 noon, we'll have a traditional seven last words service with seven young adult preachers. And then at 7 p.m., we will have a Good Friday, Seven Last Words, illustrated through the arts. On Easter Sunday, April 4th, at 8 a.m., we will have an early Easter morning communion service on the lawn. Masks and social distancing is required and we will use on-street parking. At 10 a.m., we'll have our virtual <clears throat> Easter service, and at 5 p.m., the bridge will have their virtual Easter service. We hope that you will join us throughout Holy Week for all of our celebrations. We ask that you would be in prayer for these members of our community. Special prayers for the family of Dr. Lorraine Bess in her loss. Arrangements for her celebration of life are to be announced. We offer congratulations to Adele Banks, who received a Religion Communications Council Wilbur Award for her work on the Beyond the Most Segregated Hour uh, news series. We also uh, offer our thanks to Randolph Scott for representing Asbury and participating in the United Methodist Church Worldwide Virtual Easter Choir. I'm sure, like, like me, all of you were moved by the tragic events that occurred in Atlanta, and also by the attacks <coughs> upon Asian Americans that have been occurring across the country. In the wake of recent attacks on Asian Americans, we joined with the Korean Caucus of the Baltimore-Washington Conference and our churches in offering this special call to worship on Palm Sunday. Hosanna, who comes in the name of the dead, grieving, and mourning. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Hosanna, who comes in the name of the ignored, neglected, and marginalized. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hosanna, who comes in the name of children, single parents, and immigrants. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Join us now in our gathering hymn, The Palms.
Lord and our God, we thank you, God, for your triumphant entry into our world each and every day. We are thankful of you being our God, our Emmanuel, in every presence to worship, to honor, and adore. We long to join you this morning in this morning chorus, giving you thanks and praise for who you are and for all you have created, all you are creating. Thank you for keeping us, providing for us, protecting us, and healing us each and every day. For where would we be without you, Lord? Through your sovereign plan of redemption and reconciliation, forgive us for the times where we have gone about our own business, concerned with the many things of life in the world, oblivious to the needs of those around us, and oblivious to the call of your love in our hearts. Our God of grace, equip us to be your servants, listening, eager, ready to bless you and others we encounter. In our world, even in the midst of the hatred and anger and despair, we still call on you, God. In you, there is hope, a hope of grace, mercy, that would draw all man, humankind to you, O oh Lord. Thank you for your extravagant love that endures forever. More than ever, we are asking for a continued vision of your triumphant entrance, changing our hearts one by one, Lord, creating an army of peacemakers who say no to violence. You, God of great deeds, open our hearts to be your hearts, open our hands to be your hands, our arms to be your loving arms for all those who are in need of your presence. Again, we bless this day as we experience you through the proclaimed word afresh that is spoken from the heart of your servant. And O oh Lord, incline your ears to our prayers and lighten our hearts by the light of your presence. And we ask all of these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, as it reads. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a tied a tie there a coat that has been never been written. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will bring it back here immediately. They went away and found a coat tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to, him, said to them, what are you doing untying the coat? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their coats on it and he, said, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it would already, as it would already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have the honor of introducing our preacher of the hour. Bishop Marcus Matthews is a retired bishop in the United Methodist Church. He is the former executive secretary of the Council of Bishops of the United Methodist Church, a position he held in retirement. And prior to his retirement, Bishop Matthews served as the resident bishop of the Washington Episcopal area, the New York West Episcopal area, and the Philadelphia Episcopal area. An important hallmark of Bishop Matthews' ministry has been higher education. He has served on the board of directors of Africa University as board president and has supported Africa University in many ways, including building a sports center. As well, Bishop Matthews has served as bishop in residence at Wesley Theological Seminary. Following the Simonic selection, we will hear a Palm Sunday message of hope and healing through God's servant, Bishop Marcus Matthews.
Greetings, my sisters and brothers, those of you online and those of you who are privileged to be here with us today. I felt like shouting, listening to the music from this group. My heart is on fire at this moment because we are blessed to have such good musicians leading us on this Palm Sunday. Let me, though, thank our pastor, our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Iantha Mills, for not only extending this invitation for me to preach today, but for all of the courtesies that she offers to both me and Barbara. And I'm also thankful to Reverend Wise for the way in which he, too, is giving leadership here at Asbury. We have just completed a month of March with sermons focused on, on women's celebrations, on the many contributions that women have made throughout history. And today, on this beautiful day, we celebrate Palm Sunday. The text that I will be using for today comes to us from Zechariah, the ninth chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. And it reads, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Sing aloud, daughter Jerusalem. Look, your king will come to you. He is righteous and victorious. He is humble and riding on an ass on a coat, the offering of a donkey. Won't you pray with me? All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna ring. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Two parades, two parades, sunshine and shadow. Reverend Al Sharpton, in his latest book, Rise Up, shares how as a teenager living in New York City, he was privileged to know Shirley Chisholm, who was a teacher in the public school system. He watched her from a distance as she ministered in that community. And so he said in 1968, Shirley ran for the House of Representatives from New York's 12th congressional district. The district had recently been redrawn by court mandate, which diluted the black vote. And aren't we having similar conversations today, 53 years later? Ms. Chisholm was endorsed by that community for the many things that she was doing. She became a later a Congress woman. The book state that she couldn't be bought, and so the community felt she was the right person for the job. She was not afraid of a little controversy or confrontation if it meant doing the right thing to help someone. Our history books record that she was elected the first black woman to go to Congress, and also, need I remind you, the only woman in the freshman class that year. Congresswoman Chisholm, in 1972, ran for president of the United States. Reverend Sharpton said that she was a leader. She was a catalyst for change, full stop. She did all of the right things. She had all of the right credentials. She had what it took. 
This should have been, my friends, enough, but it wasn't. For this should have been the moment for Shirley to have been in the sunshine of her life. And yet she had trouble, trouble mustering the support of what should have been her most ardent supporters and backers, women and blights. Sadly, my friends, all of the accolades, all of the cheering, all of the affirmations, all of the ways in which people had been encouraging her to go out and to do things to help someone else, in her autobiography, unbossed and unbought, she expressed her disappointment that what she thought were trusted colleagues, the people who had been affirming her and cheering her on, they didn't really support her when it was needed. When asked shortly before her death, what would she want history to remember about her? She said, I want history to remember me not just because I was the first black woman to be elected to Congress. No, not that. Not even the first black woman to have made a bid to be president of these United States. Rather, she said, I want people to remember Shirley as a black woman who lived in the 20th century and one who dared to be herself. We all remembered hearing President Obama saying posthumously awarding her the Presidential Medal of Freedom he said, there are people who go right, there are people who go left, but there are people like Shirley who went straight ahead. She was in two parades, my friends, a parade of sunshine with people affirming her, nudging her on, encouraging her to be the very best that she could be, but she was also in the parade of disappointment, shadows, where people turned their backs on her when she needed them. Her story involves sunshine and shadows, but one that is not altogether unfamiliar. Believe it or not, it happened to Jesus as well, when Jesus emerged on the public scene, he was overnight sensation. The common people heard him gladly and they flocked to hear him. As people listened to what Jesus was saying, they heard a different story. They heard a message of compassion, justice, and inclusion. People discovered all type ways to try to get near him because they wanted more from Jesus. Zacchaeus, the story reports, a very tiny man, because of the crowd, climbed up into the tree so that he could see Jesus as he approached the crowd. Thousands came out to see and to hear him, even when he tried to get some rest and to go off to be refreshed, the crowd still followed him. They just could not get enough. The people discovered where he was and they would flock to him. Great crowds, great crowds flocked to hear him preach his sermon on the mount. That great classic sermon when he said, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the meek, blessed are you when people persecute you, for righteousness' sake. That sermon, my friends, was heard by thousands who lined the hillsides of Galilee to get a glimpse of him and to hang on to his every word. 
No wonder the scribes and the Pharisees and the rulers of the temple were worried. They hated him because at one point it was said that the whole world is going after him to listen to him. Those persons were afraid that he would take away their followers. They would lose control. And so, for them, Jesus was a problem. Like Congresswoman Chisholm, things came to a crescendo for Jesus on Palm Sunday. When Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, he came to town riding on a donkey, and the word spread. People went out to meet and to greet him. They spread their clothing on the streets and threw palm branches all over the street for Jesus. They were singing, Hosanna, cheering crowds. What a parade, great word of affirmation and hope for the people during that period. But the cheering, the cheering and all the applause did not last even long for Jesus. There came a point by the end of the week when the tide began to turn against him. The cheering stopped. His critics now began to attack him publicly. Earlier, they were afraid because he was always protected with so many other loving people around him. But as the crowd began to wean and people began to fall off, then they felt that they could approach Jesus and the opposition began to turn against him. They first decided to try to test his character. And that's something that people always like to do. When they want to get under your skin, they decided to test your character. They called him a sinner for healing a blind man on the Sabbath. They criticized him for sitting with a Samaritan woman at the well. They quoted from scripture and accused him of not teaching what the scripture said. When they brought a woman caught in adultery and they were ready to stone her to death because that is what it says in scripture that you are supposed to do. And then Jesus turned to the crowd and asked the question, which one of you is without sin? You go ahead and cast the first stone. They held that against him because they said he was not upholding the teachings of Scripture. And so it is all ended with a second parade. After he was condemned to death, he wearily and painfully carried the cross on his back, shuffling up the hill to Calvary. And they mocked him and made fun of him, jeering after him. They called him an imposter and told him he should call on God to save him. What a roller coaster. What a roller coaster ride this was for Jesus. The crowd shouted, Hosanna on Palm Sunday in the Palm Sunday parade, were now screaming, crucify him. Crucify him in the Good Friday Parade. The coronation of a king on Palm Sunday became the crucifixion of a criminal on Good Friday. We get a glimpse of life as we look closely at these two parades. In both parades, Jesus was the center of action he was the center of attention, but how different the two parades were. It was predicted by Zechariah. He said the Messiah, the new king of Israel, will enter Jerusalem, riding on a donkey triumphant and victorious, yet humble and peace-loving. He was hailed as a king who came in peace to bring peace. 
But you know the story. By the end of the week, it was not peace that Jesus found. The adulation of the crowds had turned to scorn and derision and hatred. He had been arrested without charges, convicted in a prejudicial court, sentenced to die. He had been beaten within an inch of his life and forced to carry a cross of heavy timber on his body back to his own execution. Jesus knew that every inch of the road brought him closer to the most torturous death ever devised by humankind. The few women who were still faithful were following him, weeping and wailing. His last moment spent suffocating between two criminals. Yet, through it all, my friends, Jesus, Jesus never wavered on the way to the cross. Despite the jeers and the pain, he kept putting one foot in front of the other until he finally reached Calvary and they nailed him to the cross. He never quit. It did not matter whether the crowd was cheering or jeering. Jesus was steadfast in the completion of his mission to save the world. And so my question to you on this Palm Sunday is what insights can we gain about our own lives as we look at these two parades that Jesus found himself in? When the journey is pleasant in life, friends, enjoy the sunshine. Some days are like Palm Sunday Parade. Everything, everything seems to be falling in place in your life and things are going your way. You got that good job. You're getting a pay raise. Your children are behaving and doing all of the good things. Well, we have vaccines now to help us out with this pandemic. It seems like everything is going all right. It seems like everybody loves you. Every problem is surmountable and every task you are asked to do is doable. The sun is shining. You feel great to be alive. If ever you have these days, my friends, don't grumble about it. Take it in, enjoy the sunshine. For believe me, there will be other days that will not be the same. Just enjoy the good times. Just enjoy the happy times. When you are on top of your game, when things are going well, enjoy it. For at some time or another, the road will get rough, my friends. Just as there are some days when you will be walking in sunshine and applause, as sure as today is Palm Sunday, there will come times in your life when the storms of life will be raging. And like Charles Albert Timley, you too will be saying, asking God to stand by you. So when the journey is pleasant, enjoy the ride. And when the road is rough, just hang in there and endure the pain. Don't give up. Sometime you are carrying that cross. The crowd is shouting at you and every step is an effort. For people of faith, we know that sunshine and shadows come. We know that joy, pain, and suffering will come. We know that we will have our Good Friday parade when people will be cruel to us and unkind to us. Jesus loved life, but he also suffered pain and sorrow. And he endured the pain to save you and me and the world. He suffered and therefore he know what we are going through today. Two pandemics, the coronavirus and pandemic 1619. 
So relying on the grace of Christ, we can endure our pain and learn from it and use it to overcome our difficulties and even glorify God through it. When the journey of life is present, just enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy those moments when people affirm you. Enjoy those moments when something good happens in your life. For when the road is rough, endure the pain and always keep your eye on the prize and never lose your humanity and your faith in God. Friends, this is the good news. This is the good news of Palm Sunday. When the journey of life brings us into the sunshine of the Palm Sunday parade, and the journey is pleasant, and we are happy and upbeat, and things are going well for you, enjoy the ride. And when the road of life gets rough and we are in the Good Friday parade, let us not become bitter, opt out, and just throw in the towel, but hold on to God's hand. Don't ever give up. Trust in God, and your difficulty days will not be always. And so we sing today, Hosanna Loud, which was written by Jeanette Thurfall. She had a difficult life in childhood. She was born in a small place called Blackbourne, England. Both her parents died when she was a very young child. She was sent to live with her uncle and aunt, but after a short period, they had to send her to live with other relatives. So she found herself moving from place to place as a young person. During all this time, two serious accidents left her first lame and then severely disabled, confining her to her bed. But you know, despite these circumstances, despite what was happening in her life, she did not give up. The accounts of her life indicate that Jeanette was always cheerful and loved to write poems and hymns. An invalid woman, an invalid English woman who never turned her back on God, who made her life one of sunshine and not shadows. This text first appeared in the author's volume, Sunshine and Shadow. And so Palm Sunday, the only day of triumph known by Christ in his earthly ministry, is like celebrating a first birthday for a person. Zacharias reminds us that a humble king riding a donkey, shout and cheer, daughter Zion, raise the roof, daughter Jerusalem. Your king is coming, a good king who makes all things right. A humble king riding a donkey, a mere coat of a donkey. I've had it with wars, no more chariots in Ephraim. No more horses in Jerusalem. No more swords and spears, bows and arrows. No more guns in our supermarkets. No more guns killing our children in our schools and in our communities. And no more excuses for persons who have the opportunity to make decisions about how we control guns in America. No more, my friends, racism. No more persons feeling that they are superior over others. No more killing of black lives, brown lives, and yellow lives. No more, my friends, racism. He will offer peace. Peace to the nation. A peaceful rule worldwide for the four winds of the seven seas. And so, my friends, shout, 
Shout, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. The little children sang. The children sang their praises, this simplest and the best. Your life, your life does not have to be one of living in shadows. But God gives us an opportunity to live in the sunshine, to enjoy the ride, to enjoy all of the blessings that God and God alone gives us. So be it. Amen. As we continue to listen to our organist, there may be persons online who have not joined any church. We wish you would come and join Asbury. You simply just need to call the church office or you can go online and find our webpage and just make a notation to one of the pastors and they will be in touch with you. We have a lot of members living, not just simply in the Washington DC area, but throughout this nation. And so we invite you, if you need a church home, if you're looking for a place where there's lots and lots of sunshine, we would invite you to come here to Asbury. And if there are others who simply need to find some place locally, I pray and hope that you would find a church home where you would feel comfortable, where you will go and grow, and where you would be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, tomorrow, my friends, is God's secret. I wish, I wish that I could say to you that you have a month before you can maybe connect yourself with a faith community, but we don't know. Only God knows what tomorrow holds. And so we invite you, we invite you to join a household of God. Be the sunshine that the world needs today, so be it. Amen. Let us continue in our worship with this prayer as we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings. Almighty and everlasting God, as we bring our gifts and lay them at your altar, we remember the crowds in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road, shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed by. We know that they were looking for a Messiah who was different from who you sent Jesus to be. Not one of political power and military might, but one who came in compassion and mercy to heal and to love and to save. Search our hearts, O oh God, that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need, Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen. The gifts you give through our general offering make it possible for Asbury to fulfill his mission and ministry throughout the year. There are three ways that you can give. First, you can give online by going to Asbury's homepage at asburyumcdc.org and clicking on the Give button at the top of the page. The second way that you can give is to give electronically through your banking institution. And the third way that you can give is through U.S. mail. Make your check out to Asbury United Methodist Church and mail it to 926 11th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C. 20001. 
Thank you for your generosity and for your support of our ministry.
have received a palm cross in the mail, and if you don't or did not get one, we invite you to um, grab a piece of palm that you may have at your home. If you don't have a piece of palm, we invite you to lift your hands. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God for the act of love by which we have been redeemed through God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let the palm crosses, the pieces of palms, and our palms that we hold be for us a sign of Christ's victory. And grant that we who bear these palm crosses in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As our soloist Henry Brown sings the Holy City, you are invited to wave your palms or lift your hands unto the Lord as he sings especially the chorus. Last night I lay asleep there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing and ever as they sang, I thought the voice of angels from heaven answering. I thought Oh 
again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open wide, and all ourselves now for the sending forth hymn. I want to do a shout out to Pastor Mills, again thanking her for entrusting me and Barbara with this pulpit and with other responsibilities, and also to give a shout out again to Dr. Williams and this musical team for their gifts that they continue to share with us on Sunday. And I certainly would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out for Mr. Brother Milton, for Hilton, for the way in which his team um, cares for us in all of these services, making it possible for many of us to be at home in a safe place. Now let us stand and sing together our sending forth hymn Take the name of Jesus with you.
go forth in peace. And may Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this day and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. serve with us online at asburyumcdc.org. Until next time, be blessed.